sound and sound designing is one of those jobs a lot like makeup or, or wardrobe or any of the other departments, which are more to me essential than often what I do because the pedigree is determined by how much you don't notice it. Let's be real, audio is the one thing that can ruin a television show. It's the one thing where our, our ear will just pick up like, no, that's off, that's wrong. And our show always sounds and feels like a bigger show than when I'm on set filming. Like, by the time we get to screen, it feels like a full home and a full world. I kind of equate sound as like the offensive guard of, of the film business. I mean, no one really thinks of offensive linemen until they screw up. With every actor on this show, we love improvising a lot. And sometimes we don't follow the script. So there's things that characters bring to the scene that isn't scripted, and sound's always there to capture it. I talk low, naturally, so sound usually is like, can you like talk a little louder? I'm like, okay, cool, but it makes sense. You know, people need to hear every single detail of what I have to say, because it adds to the story. The produce warehouse is near the Burbank Airport, so you just, we, <laughs> we fight the trains, we fight the airplanes. The show is 98% location, and unfortunately, sound has to kind of take a back seat to that because it's, you know, it's really most important getting the shot. There's always going to be situations like this where we're at an airport, uncontrollable noise, and we just got to fight through it. How far does it fly? Well, with the weight stripped out and the auxiliary fuel tanks, about 2,200 nautical miles, give or take. I think so much about Snowfall is the sound of it, the sound of the city, the, the music, you know, everything that just, it just makes it easier for you as an actor to do your job. In season one, it was spectacular. You know, we had songs from Nina Simone. Cutie pie, you're the reason why. Like, there's just so many amazing songs. Brings you joy, brings the sorrow of this time, brings you the, the danger of the 80s. I'll meet up with you. Panama City is a very dangerous place to wander around alone. Don't worry, Matt will protect you. Mm -hmm. We're on set, and my earrings were just going and going. And I was like, how are they going to do this? But then going back to season one, you know, coming into the ADR booth and, you know, redoing the sound. And then when you see it on camera, on TV, it's like, ADR uh, stands for Automated Dialogue Recording. But really, it's just a reference to any time that we re-record dialogue, which was originally done on the set for reasons that it's too noisy, some other reason it can't be used, or simply for when we're needing to add something in addition to what we had before. So kind of new lines or voiceover or something like that. <coughs> hey! What the mother... Por favor. Por favor. The general philosophy behind ADR is that you typically mic it the same way that it was on the set, so that as much as you can, you're, you're duplicating the sound that you did at the time. And then at the end of the process, we take it onto the mix stage, uh, and we combine all those things together into the final mix.